Hey everyone, well, Nigel, Nigel Howell has asked me on the, um, in our group, our virtual barbecue group, to do a quick demonstration on how to make, um, basically the easy way of making buns and wraps and cobs. And it's the same for bread, you just simply have the, the bread in a bigger shape. So all I've done here is 500 grams of this is strong flour, but plain flour will do just as well. Slightly different body to the bread, but uh, if you can, I know it's difficult at this point in time, but if you can try and get strong white flour, if not, then plain white flour will do. I've got seven grams of salt in here, which is about a good heap, maybe a touch more, a teaspoon of salt. And uh, so that's seven grams of salt and one packet or seven grams of easy bake yeast. You can get these um, most of the time, not always at this point in time, but most of the time you can still get these in shops. You may have to shop a few times to catch it in. Now the key thing to bear in mind that salt and yeast, so those salt adds to the body uh, and flavor of the, the buns and wraps and cobs and the bread. Uh, it doesn't work, it doesn't react very well with yeast. So um, try not to overdo the salt. You do need salt in there to add to the flavour, but you can adjust the taste, um, but definitely don't use too much. So seven grams of yeast. Again, just add that. Now, <clears throat> I tend to work what's called 60% uh, hydration, which basically means 500 grams of flour. So I'm using uh, in this case, one water, um, about 300 grams or 300 cc, which is the same thing. Um, I tend to use boiled water simply because that way it hasn't got the chlorine in and therefore has a less negative effect on the yeast again, um, yeast as well. Just move this out of the way. Okay, simple pour in and start to mix. Again, if you've got a mixer, you can use that, or just simply, as I'm doing in this case, just simply have a bowl full of flour, yeast, and salt, and add the water. If you add too much water, uh, what tends to happen then is the actual dough, the pat, becomes too soft and sticky on your hands. Um, that's not a problem. Um, you can actually cheat by. Where is it? <coughs> You can cheat by putting some oil, I use olive oil, on your hands and on the surface to stop the pat and the dough from sticking to your hands and to the, uh, to the surface that you're going to need it on. Now, simply a case of mix quite a lot. Um, I'll probably show you in the next bit after I've been mixing this for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to switch the recording off. I'm going to mix this for about 10 minutes and then we'll look at kneading the bread. Okay, I've been mixing for about 10 minutes. Just clear this rubbish away. And so what I need to do now is start to stretch the fibres by basically needing to, um, to bring the whole pattern dough together. Okay, these by the way are just simple cheap things from eBay. They're about a small pack, I think three of them for about 99p. Dead useful to get if you start, uh, start to cook um, something baked bread and what have you more often, or pizza bases. Right, kneading. 
try and keep it in a reasonable round shape. I, the way I do it, uh, probably not the best way, but the way I do it, is I push out with the heel of my um, hand and then basically pull back with my fingers. Sometimes I use my left hand as well to spin the bread around a bit. So push, pull back, push, pull back, push, pull back, and so on. And um, I'm doing that until I get what's called the window effect on the pad. So if you get the bread and start to stretch it, you can see if it's, uh, see it's pulling apart too easily. So at the moment, it's not creating a nice, when I get the pad, I try and create like a window effect. It's just breaking apart. So I know at the moment this isn't is this this isn't quite ready. So I probably need to need this for about another ten minutes or so. Okay, um, it's getting there. It's getting less sticky on my hands. It's getting um, harder to to knead it. So it's definitely. Uh, pulling together is a good good pat. Let's have a have a look. Yeah, that's much better now as so it's a pat. It's not breaking up so easily. So <clears throat> remember, this is the quick and easy way, not the proper artisan way of doing it. The next step is you're supposed to leave it to basically to to prove, or I just call it raising, but in reality it's proving. Um, now, typically, if you're doing this as a whole bread and you wanted it as a classic just type of large bread like this, you'll stretch the skin. As a stretch of skin, you tend to uh, just pull it under like that and stretch the skin. Uh, so it stretches on the outside by pulling it on the inside. Now, in reality, we're making a series of um, cobs or bats or bones or however, however, however you want to call it. And so we're going to break this up and then leave, leave it to rise. Um, so I've just got a, um, a tray, and on a tray I tend to put uh, greaseproof paper on. So, <clears throat> straightforward tray with greaseproof paper. Now obviously you need to break this up into have whatever size um, buns you want. Remember these are going to raise, uh, they should at least double in volume. So. Um, so we've got one like this. Let's move this out of the way. So again, we need to just try and get a nice surface on top. And then we're going to leave it to raise as a small, as a small, uh, small bun. Maybe a bit close, too close to the side. Let's put it the side a bit. And they're going to be double the size, so these are going to be quite large, quite large buns. You might want to think about making them into smaller portions, simply by cutting them up. <clears throat> now, as you leave them to prove, um, if you want to prove them overnight, it's best to put them in a the fridge. So these are smaller ones, I'm not sure about them too well. Um, or leave them leave them out now remember the top the crust tends to or the top tends to dry out a bit so uh, if you've got one of these nice spray things spray them in water or just basically cover them with a bit of water and leave them to rise and there you have it really your bonds are going to rise leave them in this fairly cold room I'm guessing about three hours uh, basically just keep an eye on it so it doubles the size uh, make sure the top's nice and moist um, and then put it in the oven now when you put it in the oven I tend to put it at 200 uh, let the oven warm up first before putting these in and have a tray at the bottom a metal tray or metal tin or something that's warming up as well when you put the bread in 
pour some water, normally boiling water, into that tin so that it creates steam. And that steam will help protect the outside, stop the outside drying too quickly and too fast, and giving it uh, a, basically uh, ability to expand a bit more without cracking up too much, and also ends up with a really nice crust. So just repeat that. Warm the oven up. Uh, obviously keep an eye on the, um, the time-wise. This could take, for example, about 15 minutes at 200 but keep an eye on the keep an eye on your oven keep an eye on the the, the um bun to see bake make sure the oven's warmed up have a metal tin in there when it's nice and hot put the bread in pour some hot water into the metal tin and the steam rising will help protect the crust and create a much nicer crust on your buns and that's it in simple terms so right these appear to be growing well proving well and i think if we uh gently prod it and it's bouncing back so it's bouncing back these are just about ready so it's put, oops daisy so these are pulling back so i think these are about ready for uh putting in the oven very soon if you press in don't press in too hard but if you press in it just caves in then basically it's over proven but this you can see you can't even see wherever where I've pressed it is bouncing back so I think this is pretty much spot on right perhaps we're about ready to uh, put in the oven um, something there someone's asked me about is in the if you do bread you have to create what's called a an ear uh, to try and control the the way it expands so if I do a quick demonstration on, on this one the biggest one to do an ear you just seem to get some kind of sharp knife and then just simply cut along like that okay so that way when it expands instead of bursting at some bizarre point you've got more control over it in addition if you want you can add you can add extra um extra um oh, this is needs to be a bit sharper you can add extra like graphics and 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 um artistic type stuff that you want to your your bread and your baps if you want in this process so uh it just matter getting a sharp knife could cut around the shapes but just remember to in your, when you do bread to create some like an ear so when it expands it'll expand that way and you have control over the bigger the bigger breads when you do it in addition if you want to do bread and so want to do this more often think about getting something like a cloche where you can bake it in and you have a stronger control okay so as pointed out this is um it's on temperature so it's at 200 and i'm about to put these in okay remember safety guys otherwise i'll get told off Right, as mentioned before, I forgot where I put the water, here we are. As I mentioned before, remember to put some water, this has just come from the kettle in the bottom, so this is to give a nicer crust. Okay, it's steaming up. It's creating a steam, so when it, the, uh, the baps and the bread first starts to develop and grow, uh, it helps create a better crust on it. Okay, and let's see how this develops again. Uh, keep an eye on this, but normally it takes about 10 to 15 minutes in the oven. Okay, it's 14 minutes later, which is kind of a quick look. One of the advantages we've got with this being um, bread rather than um, cakes is that we can look in the oven without it actually causing damage or making the bread sink. So the bread, the top ones, you can see are quite, quite well cooked. Oh, there's the pattern that I showed you with the previous one. Now, Natasha likes her bread really well cooked, so I'm gonna take this out, and I'm going to put it on the um, on the rack very soon to, to um, cool off. I'm gonna leave this one in longer, so that this can get a lot more cooking, that, uh, so Natasha can have hers um, certainly much darker than, than the others. But as you can see, <coughs> These have turned out quite well.